Hey y'all, welcome back. I hope y'all are having a great day. Um, my name is Smitty, if you didn't know that already. Uh, if you're new to the channel, thanks for checking me out. If you're an existing subscriber, thank you so much for your support. Uh, if you like your video coming up, make sure to like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you get all the latest videos. And make sure to share the videos with your friends. Um, hey, we're getting into uh, transmission series. Um, I've got some transmissions I need to go through. And not sure which way we're going to go with Scarlet or uh, the newly named Gunsmoke. Um, so I've got a couple of choices here. This is a 4L80E. Um, this is happen to be a four-wheel drive version, but this is not the one I'm going to do. This is uh, one that I've got that uh, one of the guys I used to work with wants me to go through. He said it just quit. We're going to go through it together. I'll tear it down. Uh, your label here basically tells you the year and what it belongs in and the 5 BSP. Uh, the 5 is the last digit of the model year. Uh, be it as this was in a pickup truck, it was an 05 uh, Silverado HD. And uh, so that'll tell you the year of it. It's also on this tag right here. I mean, the BSP will tell you what it is. Um, the only difference in the two-wheel drive and the four-wheel drive is uh, the output shaft. And there is a plug, which... That plug right there, that plug is not, is, uh, got a pinhole in it, if I remember right, uh, because it has to have some way to lubricate the rear shaft where it's not the same on the, on the four-wheel drive. But other than that, the transmissions are identical inside. So, I've actually got two of those. I've got this one, and I've got this other one on the floor. Now this is one that he picked up when this one quit, and that says it's out of a 2000, which it's not. It's actually out of an 02. Uh, again, you've got your tag right there, it's 2 BSP, which is 2002 model year. But he said that one quit too. I did some preliminary check on this last night, and just doing some looking at this front bushing on the for the torque converter. Hopefully you can see this thing. There you go. That thing is tore up from the floor up. It's not supposed to have all those grooves in it like that. I mean, that thing is flat eight up. Usually what that's caused from is lack of fluid pressure. My guess is that this thing's gonna have a broken pump in it. Um, it's not as common, but it does happen uh, where the crescent moon and gear will, will crack. Uh, 350 turbos were good about that. And usually what it's caused it uh, from is when the torque converter, when you're putting it in or something like that, the torque converter slides out of its groove just enough. And it's not reseated before you put it back in there. Usually when that happens, it'll put extra stress on the pump and it'll destroy the pump. Uh, 700R4s, 4L60Es, that's a real common problem. Um, I've seen it too many times. But uh, anyway, I drained the fluid out of it last night. And I got some funky looking stuff in it. It almost looks like it had coolant in it. I hope that's not the case, but if, because if it did, that, I mean, it's definitely trashed. So I've got those two. Over here, I have a 6L80, and that's out of a, a, a 2017 two-wheel drive Silverado. And it's flat burn up. The 4L80Es, or the 6L80s, um, they have a problem with the uh, torque converters on them. And I don't know what it is about the material that they use in it, but the material delaminates from the, the friction material delaminates from the actual backing plate. And so it starts to slip. Uh, when it starts to slip, it sends all that metal and debris down into the pan because that's where it returns um, goes down into the pan and the filter picks it up 
Well, eventually the filter gets plugged with all that fine particles, so it starves the pump for fluid pressure, and then the pump scores the inside of the pump housing, and you lose fluid pressure, and it burns up the four, five, six clutch. And then it's just basically, it just, it cooks itself after that. Um, there's been a worst, one of the worst cases I had, um, it actually plugged up both the oil coolers, uh, the one in the radiator and the auxiliary. Excuse me, a gentleman happened to have been traveling and brought it in and it was, the transmission had gotten so hot that it wouldn't read uh, temperature on the, on the instrument panel. Um, it stops reading at 249 degrees. Uh, that's way hot for an automatic. Um, automatics are happy around, oh, between 150 and 200 degrees is, is okay for an automatic in normal use. Uh, if you're doing a race prep job, you want as much cooling to that transmission as you can, but you don't want it too cold because that'll cause a problem too. Um, ideally, about 150 degrees would be great for, you know, a passenger car with the right cooler on it. Uh, right cooler makes a world of difference. Um, you, I can't tell you, heat is the number one enemy of an automatic, and it, and it applies in other conditions. Anyway, um, so... I've also got get that out of the way. I've got the original 700R4 out of Scarlet. I am going to go that go through that one to make sure I've got a backup um, if I can't round up stuff. You know, of course, you know as well as I do, hobbies cost money. And I don't have any of it. So, I'm uh, making do with what I got. Um, I do have a T5, and we're going to go through that. That is a later model, Tremec. That is a 2002 model, Tremec. Um, little thing about when Tremec actually started putting their name on the T5s, which are still Borg Warners, um, they were all world class. Which means... Um, underneath the gears, they actually have roller bearings on, under them instead of being just gear to shaft clearance and machine clearance. The first T5s were just machine clearance. Um, another prime example, I don't know if you can see it or not, that transmission right back there is a Jetrag 5-speed um, out of a, oh... Cavalier, Sunfire, uh, Grand Am, all those back then. And those actually are gear to shaft. There is no bearing underneath of it, so it just relies on oil to, you know, to lubricate the shaft. And the problem they had with those is in first and second gear, it actually spins so fast that it caused the gear to chatter on the shaft. And that was a big complaint with one. I had one of those cars and it did exactly that. Um, I had two Z24s uh, back when. One was a 98. The 98 had the um, Olds 2.4 liter in it, twin cams, and it had an Azuzu 5 speed, which that was a fantastic transmission. And uh, my 2001. Uh, Z24 they had switched to the jet drag and the shifter was different and the transmission drove different I actually got better gas mileage out of the one with the Zuzu than I did the, the jet drag but anyway enough on that so anyway we're gonna go through this dude and I will uh, I will get the camera set up and we will go through this thing. I will get it apart. We'll do this in steps, make a series out of it, and we'll go through each individual piece little by little. Some of the stuff I won't record, like cleaning everything up, is what I'll do is I'll probably take it to work and use the tank at work and, and get as much grease and grime and crap off of it as I can. So 
Anyway, let me get you set up and we'll get at it. Get some tools here and let's get this thing tore down. I actually have two different cameras going this time. Maybe it'll give you a better point of view. Let's start by taking the pan and the and the uh, pump out. Let's do the pan first. Well, there's definitely some crap in the bottom of this thing. You can see right here. Definitely got a, a failed clutch in there somewhere. That's nasty. By the way, the pan gaskets on a 4L80E are reusable. If you get one that's not reusable, that means they've changed it or it's an old style design. But all the newer stuff, uh, pan gaskets are reusable. This filter looks like it's got some chunk in it. Also feels like it's broke. Nope. It's not broke. Take your wire harness off next. That one's already broke. Somebody, somebody zip tied it on there. Anyway, what I was saying, if you didn't catch it earlier, the pan gaskets are reusable. Um, I'm sure you did. One of the cameras picked it up. Pick that zip tie off of there. Clip off there, clip out of there. Clip right here. Again, don't try to pry them too far because they're going to be brittle a lot of times. Yep, see, just like that one broke. It is what it is. This here is your pressure switch. It will tell the TCM or PCM, whichever you have, what gear it is in. Oh, that's nice. I've seen that. Somebody's goobered the holy bejesus out of that. I'm going to tell you right now, guys and gals, if you got one of these that somebody's put a buttload of silicone on, you know, as a tranny guy, that's something you don't like to see. I just don't like the thought of using this big old Milwaukee on a transmission. This thing here has had more transmission fluid in it than I can think of. It was my first cordless tool I bought and I did a lot of transmissions with it. Take your manual manual link out. The later model transmissions, uh, you only take certain valve body bolts out um, because they actually are two halves. Now these older ones are all one piece. So, except for like these little eight millimeter headed jobs. That may be an exception to it. You may have to take these out too. It's like I said, it's been a long time since I've done one of these. That's scary. When you get one that just takes no effort to come out, but some of them are really tight, that means somebody's been into the valve body or they've had it out.
Okay, this thing's got a bunch of crap in it. I don't know if you can see it or not, but uh, in these little diaphragms here, these are little membranes that are in there. And there's all sorts of junk in there. That one's got a whole bunch of sludge. You can see all that crap on the towel. That uh, that tells what gear it's in. So you notice that it's springed up a little bit. There is a um, accumulator underneath here. There's the valve body. Yeah, somebody has been in it. Transtech is not a GM deal, so somebody's been in the valve body. So that'll be something we'll need to make sure to go through. Here's your accumulator here. Just pull it out and there'll be a spring in there. And there's check balls, all these little check balls. There's a screen right there. That's one of your uh, through bolts that holds uh, the fourth clutch. And it is an orifice, so there's a two orifice that goes through there. There's another one down here at the bottom. And uh, it's also got an orifice in it. So what I usually do is I just take a magnet. They tell you not to do it this way. Actually magnetize it, which I could see that, you know, possibly being an issue. But in the many years that I've done this, I've never had one with a magnetized check ball. Okay, this is your band servo here. Wow, that's tight. That's yummy. There's a whole bunch of crap in that too. fourth apply piston or your band apply piston spring I just like to keep all that stuff together and since that's got fluid in it we're going to tilt it down and let that drain out plus we're pretty much done down here for now you can see the screen a little better now it just comes out a little filter Time to take the pump out. There is an O-ring here. This is what they call the turbine shaft O-ring, it, but it's made for the torque converse. It's a torque converse seal is basically what it is. But that's what makes your torque converter work. Okay, there's usually a little seal underneath there, underneath that bolt. I do believe it there. It's there, but it's just crusty. Yeah, it's there. There you go. There one of the seals is. But you want to make sure to replace those when you do your overhaul. See if I can get one off. Yeah, these dudes are pretty brittle, but that's all it is. A little seal. There's 
sometimes you don't get that lucky, but that one actually come loose. And there you go. That's your pump. Your fourth is right here on top. You've got a locking pin over here. But now that you got that out, should be able to lift up on this. Just like that. You got a planetary, a couple of Teflon seals here, gear, there's a sprag there, and you get your uh, your clutch right there. Now that's where it comes into the fact you got to take this bolt out right here. And it is a Torx. And you are supposed to replace this when you when you do the, the overall. A lot of times the kit will give you the bolt, but it's all it is, a little Torx bolt. But you can see there's an orifice through it. Well, you can't really see there's a hole there, but trust me, there's a hole there. There you go. You can see it right there. Slide the fourth clutch out, just like that. Set it off to the side. Pull your next drum out. Okay, now, see the color of that? It isn't supposed to be that color. This uh, will be your forward clutch, if I remember right. There's a snap ring down in there. It's right here. Sometimes if you hold the tongue just right. I'm not gonna be able to do it. Let's say sometimes you just fish it out with your fingers. Sometimes it takes a little persuasion with Mr. Screwdriver. Just like that. Pull that dude out. Grab a hold. Should be able to get all your clutches out of there. Okay, take this snap ring out here. All right, y'all. I finally got this snap ring out. It's just a booger. You didn't have much room to get at it. Now you should be able to pull the rest of your housing out. There's your center support there, and there's a piston there. That's just a sprag on the other side. A sprag is a one-way roller clutch, in case you didn't know. Another little snap ring down there. And out it comes and that's your uh, that's the rear rear housing assembly with the planetaries in it your sprag is right here that's what that other piece goes in get a needle bearing down in there
low reverse band is kind of a bird to get out. This band's kind of tough to get out. And it's kind of warped too. You see how the two anchor pins are kind of offset. So that's it. So there it is, y'all. It's disassembled. There's the inside of the case. Nothing spectacular. And like I said, there's our culprit right there. So in the next couple of videos, we'll go through pieces of it at a time. Um, I'd imagine try to keep things short. Um, I'll probably do a detailed explanation of each one. So there it is. So if you liked what you've seen today, make sure to hit that like and subscribe. Make sure to hit that like button. Man, it helps us out a bunch. Um, Consider subscribing if you aren't already. Uh, leave me a comment if there's something that you'd like to see different. But uh, on that note, uh, y'all have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for subbing. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, until the next video, God bless you and we'll see you later. Bye-bye.